so i am going to uh, concentrate more on the lumbar region and the sacral though uh, ultrasound of uh, spine can also be extended to thoracic region and cervical region though they have uh, their own pros and cons and some expertise is needed when these regions are being dealt with right so coming to the basics so we all know that an um, neuraxial blockade is bread and butter of any anesthetist okay so without knowing a neuraxial blockade it's very hard for any anesthetist like general anesthetist to survive in the field so and we are quite uh, successful in doing this based upon landmark technique right from our uh, residency we have been taught that uh, just palpating the spine and identifying the level and then identifying the spinous process and then we go ahead with the way of during the axial blockade and we are almost successful in most of the cases say just for example in your early days maybe 60 to 70% of the cases you will be successful by the end of your uh, uh, post graduation you will be almost 90% successful and say for uh, after 4 or 5 years of experience almost 99% of the cases you would be able to uh, get the block done without any much uh, difficulty but we do have some cases where we will be finding it difficult no matter what may, may be our expertise suppose if we take a, a patient like this who is morbidly obese and we are not able to palpate any of the bony landmarks like the spinous processes or the iliac crest because we are going to palpate the iliac crest and we just uh, uh, have a imaginary line running in between both which will be uh, uh, corresponding to the l3 or l4 vertebral body and then we will palpate the midline and then we will go ahead with the block suppose if you get a such a kind of patient and you are not able to identify any landmarks how we are going to proceed because multiple punctures will be ending up fed up with the uh, procedure and um, making more discomfort to the patient also so ultrasound is going to help you in identifying the bony landmarks in these patients just like the way we do in a conventional technique so we can identify the bony landmarks and straight away you can do the neuraxial blockade and if suppose you are getting a patient like the second one where the anatomy is not normal because we do get patients in whom the spine has some anomalous malformations it may be a kyphosis it may be a scoliosis it may be a absent hemi vertebra and lot of lot of uh, anomalies are there but most common a uh, problem which we encounter in uraxial blockade of in day to day life is a scoliotic patient where we don't know where exactly is the midline is we may palpate here and as we go cranially it deviates to either side and we may end up finding it difficult to secure the interspinous or the interlaminar space and third is a patient who is coming with a fused spine okay suppose if this kind of patient which usually is present in a uh, ankylosing spondylitis there is no space or there is no opening for us to reach the spinal canal where we can reach the epidural space or the intrathecal space to uh, establish our neuraxial blockade so here in this case without uh, proceeding we can just abandon the procedure by doing an ultrasound and making sure there is no possibility for us to reach the spinal canal rather than ending up with multiple punctures and making discomfort and ultimately recoursing to a peripheral nerve block or a general anesthesia so in present day uh, practice these three cases will be an ideal indication for us to uh, make use of ultrasound for neuraxial blockade though uh, in any case you can make use of ultrasound to identify the level as well as the uh, depth how far you have to go uh, from the skin and what angle you need to put your needle in all those things also you can make use of ultrasound to identify so before getting into the proper ultrasound scanning of the spine we need to identify or we need to uh, brush up our knowledge about the vertebrae okay and its anatomy so if we take a uh, vertebrae there are different vertebrae or different types of vertebrae in our body starting from cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and uh, coccyx so there are typical vertebrae there are atypical vertebrae so we are discussing about the typical vertebrae which do have a anterior and posterior part okay the anterior part will be having a vertebral body and the posterior part is comprising of an arch 
this arch is being formed by pedicles anteriorly and the pedicles joins posteriorly as a lamina and ending up in the spinous process and we do have six processes on either side of the pedicle they are the transverse process laterally superior and inferior articular faces on the superior and the inferior side of the pedicles respectively okay so these are the uh, anatomical uh, things present in a typical vertebrae we are not uh, talking about a typical vertebra like uh, uh, c1 c2 or sacrum or coccyx okay this is mainly the thoracic and the um, cervical like c3 to c7 and thoracic lumbar vertebrae so we'll see what is what so the vertebral body lies anteriorly right and the pedicles emerge posteriorly from the vertebral body and forms the lamina on either sides and ending up in the spinous process and laterally if you see the transverse process will be emerging at the lateral end of both pedicles and you see the superior articular process superiorly and inferior articular process inferiorly so these processes you need to keep in mind when you do an ultrasound of the spine because each and every bony landmarks going to give a different sort of pictures which will be easy for us to identify where we are and using that we are going to establish the neuraxial blockade so this will be the lateral view of a typical vertebrae right here we have two adjacent vertebrae and to reach the spinal canal or the vertebral canal where our thickal sac is lying we have openings right so we have a interspinous space which leads to the vertebral canal or the interlamina both are situated posteriorly and we have an intertransverse opening through which also we can reach but this is not preferred because our nerve roots are coming out of this area and this is not uh, allowed because we are going to injure a definitive structure like a nerve root so this uh, opening is not of use for neuraxial blockade so we are going to enter the neuraxial canal or vertebral canal using the posterior opening between the spinous processes and the lamina so other than the bony landmarks we do need to identify or know about some of the soft tissue structures which will give a definitive uh, signs or uh, complexes which we call in the uh, ultrasound to uh, know about the depth of the dural sac and other things so if we take the anterior longitudinal ligament lies in anterior surface of the vertebral body like this and the posterior longitudinal ligament lies in the posterior surface of the vertebral body and then you have the thickal sac within the vertebral canal this is the vertebral canal and this elliptical one is the thickal sac and we have a ligament of phlegm lying at the level of pedicles right so these three components are more important whenever the neuraxial blockade is concerned using an ultrasound so these are the lateral pictures which shows the intraspinous or the interlamina space so this is the interlamina space of a lumbar spine if you go to the thoracic spine you get the interlamina or interspinous space here the thoracic spine are pretty narrow compared to the lumbar spine and the spaces are uh, very much uh, narrow compared comparatively and ultrasound of thoracic spine needs very much expertise and you need to uh, do different uh, type of uh, probe movements to identify the uh, thickal sac within a thoracic spine level whereas the lumbar is pretty much easy for us to do so in initial days i would suggest all to start with the lumbar region and gradually go to the thoracic region so before uh, uh, getting into the proper ultrasonography of uh, lumbar spine we need to know some concepts or some of the basic things which we uh, come across whenever the sonar atom is there.